flow. Well, by the title of the video, uh, you know that I'm going to be talking about the uh, Dark Knight Rises, which is 10 years old today. Um, and um, on my, you know, here on the channel, I've talked about uh, this film many times. You know, I really enjoy this movie. I think I think it's excellent. Um, I think that it's a film that um, deserves to be talked about, um, and it's a film that completed a trilogy, obviously, and a story of Bruce Wayne, which is quite, uh, you know, fairly unique um, due to the fact that, you know, when it comes to Batman stuff, you know, usually Bruce Wayne is not really the main focus, though in this trilogy he was, and um, I really love it. I love the journey of seeing Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne uh, go um, and begin his journey as Batman, train and everything, and then see him in action as Batman, and then throughout the films see how that affects him and everyone around him and especially himself um and then the conclusion where you know he's finally able to step back in a way from all that um, um obviously there are people who aren't the biggest fans of this film um um and I've addressed certain things in the past, like made a video about like what certain, you know, plot points and how they're not plot holes or they're not all that bad, you know, especially if you watched it as a trilogy, like from beginning to end, from Batman Begins to The Dark Knight Rises. Um, there's a good story throughout the entirety of it. Um... And this is a film that I just uh, love. Um, and I don't really want to get into all that stuff uh, here. Because I've made videos that you can check out on my channel. Just type in The Dark Knight Rises if you really want to. Um, but I really like this film. I love it. Um, it's my favorite of the trilogy. I've kind of made that clear. Um, but I kind of want to just sort of go back like 10 years ago. You know, I was 18 years old with friends, and we saw all three movies in a theater. Um, it was really cool. Um, it, it was something that was just like no, uh, you know, nothing... It was like an experience like no other, really. Um, it's really the best that I can describe it. Um, um, and I actually have uh, this uh, the Dark Knight Marathon still after all these years. Um, which is, this is uh, what helped uh, get you into the thing, aside from the tickets, obviously. If you had this, you're able to go in and out. Um, and that was really cool. And there was intermissions between the films, you know. So there was like a 15-minute intermission. And, um, you know, just watching Batman Begins in the Dark Knight um, on the big screen, you know, that was amazing. And I really appreciated um, the, the fact that this was something that was available for people to potentially uh, uh, go and do. And I remember uh, just watching back to back and everybody was loving these films. Everybody was really engrossed and enjoying what was happening and 
you know, that was a moment where it was just like one of the best uh, theater going experiences I've ever had. Um, you know, Revenge of the Sith when I was 11 was another one that was great. I think that's like the only one that could really rival this one. Um, because, you know, I love Star Wars. Um, and so a trilogy that's excellent like this coming to an end that also began in 2005 also you know so for that year that was like the end of a series um with star wars you know the prequel trilogy came to a close and you know they all like you know they said the saga was complete and all that so that was like the end of an era uh, for me but then the beginning of another with batman being excellent again um and the storytelling and everything was just fantastic um you know christian bale you know seeing him portray the character you know, still my favorite after all these years um you know and seeing them back to back on the big screen really i think reinforced that and um as i've said before in other videos and stuff um you know, th this film, uh, you know, really made me realize that this was like, you know, the fact that it was Bruce Wayne, it was Bruce Wayne's story, was something that I had heard Christopher Nolan discuss here and there over the years in interviews and behind the scenes stuff. Yet for some reason, it never completely clicked until I saw this film. Um, and I think also the fact that I saw it in marathon form in a theater, you know, each film back to back, that was another thing that helped reinforce that for me. Um, I probably would have gotten that at some point, but it might not have been as soon as it happened for me, which was like a few days or so later after I've really absorbed the movie. You know, of course I love I love the experience of it, but then you know he let it sit with you for a while and then you just think about it and yeah um i just love this movie uh the cast was excellent um still is um i just really love everything about this film uh just like i love pr primarily everything about uh you know the previous films um in this trilogy um, of course, you know, there's always those little things that, you know, when you really l look at them, you know, that's kind of a, a little, like a nitpick or annoyance, but, you know, in the whole grand scheme of everything, I just love it, you know. And, um, you know, for a good while after this film came out, there were people nitpicking it here and there. I'm not going to go down this road much, but, you know, as time has gone on within, like, these last ten years, um... I've seen more and more people enjoy it. You know, they're able to ex basically accept this film for what it is. It's the end of a trilogy. You know, it wasn't trying to be the Dark Knight again. And I think for some people, they kind of wanted that. They wanted it to be like that experience. And because it wasn't, it was just disappointing. Um, you know, they might have liked the film overall. Like it was, an, it was... Uh, for the most part enjoyable but they're they just it, there's certain things about it they just weren't happy with for one reason or another um and of course there's that does not mean one cannot critique this movie you know no movie is beyond being critiqued at all but sometimes you know it's like uh some you know some people just kind of take off and make certain things that they weren't too fond of or wish didn't happen or wished happened differently like like story wise or character wise or something you know everyone's different so this is a trying to be a big broad thing to encapsulate people in but uh, if there was something up with the movie that they just weren't up that you just weren't happy about you know you know that's fine though some people kind of made certain things like a big deal like how did bruce wayne 
travel around the world and get back to Gotham and this and that. It's like, well, we don't know exactly how long it took him, like, how long he was there, and then gets back to Gotham. Of course, you know, we hear <clears throat> dialogue from, you know, Lucius Fox about when the bomb will go off. But that does, but again, it's also Christopher Nolan, and he likes to play with time, so perhaps by that point, for all we know, Bruce Wayne was there in Gotham, just getting things ready to, planning things out. You know, one might say, well, he's taking too long, and um, fair enough. Um, but, you know, at the same time, Certain people where certain things were fleshed out or were, um, you know, they, they, they were addressed more properly or something of that effect. And because they weren't, um, it's a little annoying. But, you know, um... It's one of those things that, you know, as time has gone on, people have been able to, you know, put certain, you know, uh, uh, thoughts of theirs to the side, you know, and just watch the movie and accept it for what it is. And if they enjoy it for what it is, fantastic. You know, because, you know, I think that's kind of like the best way to approach really any movie, you know. That's how I approached this when I saw it for the first time, because, you know, there's all this discussion, like, well, Bruce Wayne, you know, Batman, will he die? Will he live? A friend of mine actually even said he'd fake his own death, which is quite fascinating. And for me, I, uh, you know, this was like just before we all walked in to the theater to watch The Dark Knight Rises. You know, got more popcorn and all that stuff. We were just stretching our legs for a bit before going back. And the question was asked, like, what do you think will happen? And I just, like, you know, I just want, you know, the movie to be good. I want it to end the trilogy well. And whatever happens to him, I want, you know, I want it to basically uh, be fitting and be appropriate, not be some cop-out. And I don't think it was, especially when, you know, you really look at the films back to back and realize Bruce Wayne never intended to always be Batman his whole life. And I don't think that's a bad thing to have at least just like one interpretation of Batman, Bruce Wayne, where, you know, it is a fairly more realistic world, realistic setting that Gotham is in. And so, realistically, you know, Bruce Wayne could not uh, be Batman his whole life. He would just die. You know, it's not like it's one of those, you know, films where even if it looks realistic or something, you know, there's a bit more to it that's, you know, there's a suspension of disbelief that is there that, you know, this Batman could always be, or this Batman could always be Batman until he's dead. Like, uh, it was an old man. I guess you could say Bruce Wayne, but still. The point is made there, really, I think. Um, and, um, yeah, he's just, um, you know, this version is excellent, I think. You know, I have no problem with uh, Bruce Wayne, you know, wanting to be able to live a life beyond Batman. You know, I have no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with, like, at least just one version that exists where he's able to move on, you know, uh, enough to where the death of his parents does not haunt him as much as it uh, used to. He's been able to really accept it. Like, you know, it was horrible what happened. But I can't do anything to change it, you know. But I have been able to help Gotham become a better place. And that's something that parents, you know, would have wanted. You know, they were doing uh, their best to do what they could to make things 
better throughout the city. And that's something he wanted to do, you know, just beyond running the company that his family has had for, you know, decades and decades and, you know, quite possibly over a century. Um, you know, and just help the city, help people, uh, you know, get, you know, off their feet and help, uh, make sure things are good for everybody, um, you know, a as much as one possibly could, and he did that, he was able to help stop all these threats to the city, and then... At the end of the film, you know, he you know, has a successor, you know, John Blake Robin. He gets to, you know, either become Batman, because he gets to the Batcave and everything, or he gets to be his own hero, like, say, Nightwing or uh, something of the sort. Um, regardless, Gotham will have a, you know, a protector, somebody who will continue to watch. So Batman lives on in some way, whether John Blake will actually don a cape and cowl, you know, like Batman, or have his own, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, have his own, uh, identity, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, all these, these endings for this trilogy, you know, there's always an open ending to an extent, you know, like if Batman Begins never had a sequel, we could all make up in our minds what happened after this. And same with The Dark Knight, what happened after this film. And with this, we can all sort of guess what happened, you know. Selina and Bruce might return at some point. You know, he's faked his death before, so who says he didn't do it again? Like, you know, like, oh, I, I didn't really die, but I went over here. <laughs> was, you know, a vacationing or something. I was able to get out of Gotham and... When that happened, uh, uh, you know, when that happened, I just, uh, stayed here, and then after a while, things are, looked to be good, so I returned, um, you know, and he has, like, a new girlfriend, or who knows, maybe they get married, who knows, it's, it's one of those things we, we don't know what will happen, uh, for sure, but we can all, I guess, um, think of the various possibilities of what would happen, um, and he might come back to help train John Blake and, you know, maybe, uh, be the head of, um, of, uh, Wayne Enterprises some way, you know, I'm sure he'd figure out some uh, way to do that, and, you know, he had a penthouse in the dark night, so he might just live there, and then that would be that, um, it's, it's a trilogy of films that is excellent, I think it's, uh, it is definitely amongst one of my favorite trilogies, amongst, like, a Star Wars trilogy, and, uh, I guess both, like, original and prequel trilogy, and, um, you know, this would be in there somewhere, as well as also Godfather Trilogy and so many others. Um, but ten years later, this movie, um, while people did enjoy it and made a lot of money, of course, you know, didn't get nominated for any Academy Awards, got snubbed um, in every category. You know, I think, you know, if anything... The fact that it didn't even get nominated for any technical awards is quite shocking, but, you know, it might have had to do with the fact that that shooting happened, unfortunately, and so because that's something that is, uh, some associate this film with, unfortunately, um, that might have hurt it. Um, its chances of really getting any kind of awards, but... Awards aren't always everything, you know, and ten years later, people are, it, we keep talking about this movie, people keep watching it, and not that long ago, I saw that uh, The Dark Knight Rises was like one of the, like within the top three, I believe the third most watched uh, 
a film on Netflix, you know, just before the 10th anniversary. So that's saying something, you know, something that I guess divided many people to some extent. Like some liked, like enjoyed the ending, liked it. Um, me, I loved it. I loved this ending, the trilogy, and just everything about it. And there's those who just... Um, just didn't like it for one reason or another. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say people, that everybody who had a complaint about the film, you know, you know, they were nitpicking it. I don't want to say that at all because I don't think that's accurate. But, you know, there are people who really uh, uh, just didn't like it. Um, and they have their reasons. Um, you know, there's some of those that are, you know, have legit criti critiques about the film, and that's fine. And then there are those who nitpick the movie, which I don't think does a very good job of helping one, uh, like, critique the film. But, you know, I've, like, expressed my fondness for this movie at various points um, in my videos. And uh, I'll try to uh, continue to do so. You know, this is my favorite film of the trilogies, my favorite Batman film. Of course, this trilogy as a whole is my favorite, you know, Batman story on film. So there is that, of course. Um, but yeah, um, I really love this film. I've always enjoyed it. Um, probably always will. You know, ten years later, I still love watching it. Um, you know, it's... You know, the fact that it's been 10 years since this film came out is still amazing. I really love this movie. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to continue watching this for another 10 years. Um, so um, I hope uh, this video interested you. Um, do you enjoy this film? Do you not like it? Um, why, why not, whatever uh, your uh, thoughts are on it, you can leave in the comment below if you like. And uh, with that, I will uh, talk to you all next time. I hope all of you will have an excellent day and a great rest of your week. And have a great weekend. So until then... Take care. Bye.